You are listening to The Gateway Church, located in Ferrisburg, Michigan. You can learn more about us by visiting thegateway.church or like and follow us on Facebook, where you can watch full services, keep up with all that is going on, and get connected. But man, isn't it great to be here? And thank you guys for joining me today uh, at the Gateway Church. Thanks for those that are serving or uh, joining us online as well. And I feel like I have been a fish out of water. It has been five weeks since I've preached the word. And I'm back and ready. And I've been, there's a lot moving inside of my heart. And I was just say, lock the doors. It's Labor Day. None of you guys are working tomorrow, so we're going long. That's all I got to say. We're going long. (laughs) Oh, man. Before I preach, though, I do want to say next Sunday night, we're doing the Shoreline Prayer and Worship Night, and really launching into the fall uh, is not only just the Gateway Church, but as a community praying for what God wants to do across the lakeshore, and it's going to be smashing time. It's uh, 6 o'clock. It's at Coastal Community this time, and the next time it'll be back here at the Gateway Church, but uh, please make that a priority next Sunday night. But you're saying, what have you been doing for five weeks out of the pulpit? Well, uh, I did take a little bit of time off, but I was working throughout the week on most of those weeks. But one of the things I did do is I finished uh, the big year that Logan and I had done. It was a year of discipleship, just the, uh, my son and I, and, uh, and brought that to a uh, culmination with a trip to Killarney. And um, I've got um, scars to prove it on the back of my heels. Not that you want to see this, but I'm wearing sandals today. I wear sandals a lot anyway, but uh, my heels are still oozing. And uh, if you want an up close and uh, personal look, you can uh, talk to me after and I'll tell you the story of how that happened. And uh, that'll be fun. But uh, I want you to know that the last several years, I've taken a study break throughout the summer and it's strategic. For one, it empowers the team that's around us. Pastor Sean, Pastor Bobby, Pastor Jamie's all speaking and doing a phenomenal job, by by the way. Um, It's about equipping and giving opportunities for growth. And how many know it's good to hear other voices sometimes, right? If you hear the same thing all the time. So it's great to hear other voices. And then personally... Um, I've been filled up as well. It's a study break. It's a time of preparation for the fall. And I was reading and listening and a lot of extra time in the presence of God, just kind of big chunks of time just to be with the Lord. And I just want to say thank you to the staff and to the board for just encouraging me to continue to do that uh, in the summer. And, uh, and we are almost through with summer, and I know it's sad. It's Labor Day tomorrow, but we had declared that this past summer was a summer of dreams. Everybody say, summer of dreams. And as we talk about dreams, we don't want to just stay in the dream stage. We want to move those dreams to destiny. And so we preached all summer long about Joseph and uh, the character test that the Lord brought him through. And it was, it was a phenomenal series, one of, the, one of my favorite summer series that we've ever done. And at the same time, we had Sunday mornings uh, looking at Joseph. On Wednesday nights, we studied and went through the 40-day prayer challenge through the circle uh, our Draw the Circle book by Mark Batterson. And I'm telling you, the combination of those two work together, and we have been believing for big things together. In fact, we kind of talked about three things. We're going to believe big, we're going to pray big, and we are going to receive big, and that's what we've been doing all summer. And the Lord has been stirring in our hearts, and uh, this it's been a summer of building our faith and believing for the impossible. And today, I want to focus in that, on that idea that we serve a God of impossibilities, believing for the impossible. But before we get there, I want to back up uh, two Friday nights, or did we do it on Friday night? Sunday night. Friday night. Friday night. Our vision and appreciation night. I want to say it was a smashing time. It was awesome. And our, I want to say thank you to the team uh, again, just publicly. It was incredible coming together. A lot of energy uh, throughout the summer to be ready for that. And what we did is we shared what we believe God is doing here at the Gateway Church. And we will recap that in a moment. But before we recap the vision, I want to lay a biblical foundation this morning 
for believing in a God who does miracles and believing God for the impossible. And I want to start with looking at three different chapters in the Bible. And uh, the first chapter is Luke chapter 1. And we want to answer the question, how do you and I believe for the impossible? How is it that we should do that? Or why would we be encouraged to do that? Well, it's rooted first in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, that says this, depending on the version of the Bible you have, it says, for nothing is impossible with God. That is an incredible verse. That's a verse you should memorize. You should write it down, put it on your fridge, uh, get a tattoo if you're into that, uh, whatever the case might be. And, uh, but I want to talk about the context for where that verse came from. It comes from the Christmas story. And I believe it or not, we're already thinking and preparing for Christmas. And, uh, and by the way, anybody already pulled out your Christmas decorations Anybody at all? Anybody pulled out fall decorations? Uh, Jessica was getting mad. Uh, one of, well, I can't, someone we know uh, was pulling out fall decorations. She's like, it's still the summer. <laughs> but I'm like, hey, you can't complain too bad because she pulls out Christmas stuff way early. And so uh, anyway, but, uh, but anyway, uh, but it's part of the Christmas story. And, and really, this verse is rooted in the story of John the Baptist and his birth story. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, is having this angel visit in where she's told that she's going to give birth as a virgin. And then in that same context, uh, Mary is told by the angel that uh, her cousin Elizabeth is going to bear a child as well. And this comes after 400 years of silence where God did not speak or at least wasn't speaking where it was written. And God is now ready to speak again to his people. And I love how Luke acts, the books Luke and Acts are the same author, they were together as split for scripture, but it it starts with a series of impossibilities. In fact, all of Luke and Acts, if you read it with this mindset, you can see impossibilities from the beginning through the end. And the reason is because God can do anything. He just can. But let's look at the story. Luke chapter 1, verse 6. It's the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth. It says, Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, faithful or careful to obey all of the Lord's commands and regulations. And so they are good people. And Zechariah was one of the priests and one of the, uh, there were several priestly orders, uh, over 20 if my memory serves me right, and he was at one of those, uh, within one of those. Luke 1, 7 says they had no children because Elizabeth was unable to have children, or was unable to conceive. And they were both very old. I thought, very old. So I did a little digging. Very old. They were about 60 years old. And I was thinking, there may be some people here that are offended by the scripture. That 60 (laughs) is very old. I'm just saying. But anyway, Zechariah was part of the priestly duty, and it was interesting that once uh, in a while, these, uh, these groups would come and attend to the tabernacle or to the sanctuary, and then out of all of the priests that would be there, that uh, one would be chosen to go into the sanctuary, and it just so happened, it says, by lot, uh, by chance, although we know God was directing all of this, um, Zechariah was chosen this day. And the cool thing about it is, is once you've been chosen and you've been uh, uh, commissioned to go in and to serve in the, in the sanctuary, uh, you would never be chosen again. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And in Zechariah's uh, experience, an angel shows up and speaks and says this, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. That's pretty cool. Obviously, they prayed. They wanted kids, uh, weren't able to, apparently. And it says, Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. Luke 1.18, Zechariah said to the angel, how can this be, or how can I be sure that this will happen? I am an old man, and my wife is also getting along in years. He just threw his, butt, his wife under the bus, uh, said she was old, not smart. Verse 19, then the angel said, I am Gabriel. <laughs> he, said, he reminds him who he's talking to. I'm the angel, right? And I stand in the very presence of God. I love that. He 
He's like, look, I represent the Lord Almighty, and it was he who sent me to bring you this good news. And then a little later in the chapter, we see, for nothing is impossible with God. That's Luke chapter 1. I want to go to another chapter, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, you can write this down and read the story later. It actually is a story from Genesis chapter 17 being recounted. It's a story of the impossible. It's Sarah and Abraham. Sarah is barren. She's 90 years old. Abraham is 100 years old. So talk about old now. And in this, uh, we understand that God had promised to Abraham that he was going to be great, a great nation. Uh, there would be land, blessing, nations, uh, all these things. And Abraham Abraham trusted the word of the Lord. When all hope was lost, seemed impossible, Abraham believed and against all odds. Let's look at it. Romans 4, verse 19. It says, And Abraham's faith did not weaken. Even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. Impossibility. Verse 20, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this, he brought glory to God. Let me pause for a second. When you put your faith in God and believe for something impossible, did you know that just like Abraham, it brings glory to God? You and I can bring glory to God by having great faith. And I just, that, that does something to me. And then in verse 20, it says, and he was fully convinced, fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. I love it. These two stories, Luke 1, Romans 4, which is really back to Genesis 17, talk about a dichotomy here. Number one, there's this biological impossibility. And it's put up against a theological impossibility. I want to help you understand that. The biological impossibility is that Sarah was old. So was Elizabeth, by the way. In Genesis chapter 17, I reread Genesis 17, and it just had a smile on my face this morning as I was doing it. Uh, but it says that, sh that uh, Sarah was long past the age of having children. In fact, when Sarah heard about it, she laughed. She's like, ha, 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 yeah, right, I'm 90, right? So there's this biological impossibility but there's also in the story a theological impossibility, meaning that God would break a promise? No, that's an impossibility. So compared 100 years, 90 years old versus God not following through, Abraham says, I'm trusting in the Lord. God will come through. And he didn't waver. His faith grew stronger, and he trusted God. In the New Testament, there's a verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, that talks about the promises of God. I love this. It says, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ. That's an important key. In Christ with a resounding yes. Everybody say yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to the glory of God. Again, see it over and over. We're going to see it again. It's about the glory of God. I love, you probably heard the phrase, all of God's promises are yes and amen. If you've heard that, just say amen, right? Come on. All right, you've heard it. And that comes from that scripture. And I just want you to run that idea of God's promises being yes and amen through your circumstance. The impossibility that you're facing in your family or in your school situation or your work or your health. And some of you might be sitting there thinking, oh, yeah, okay, I read that God is good and he works all things together for good, but not in my situation. And you would be wrong. And we can turn to the story of John the Baptist's birth and Isaac's birth to fortify the idea that God, he can do anything. He's a God of the impossible. But how do we believe for the impossible? I want to lay a foundation here. And really, so we've looked at Luke 1, we've looked at Romans 4, and Genesis 17, kind of. And there's one more chapter, 
And I do want to encourage you to read this chapter in its entirety uh, this week. John 14, it's Jesus talking to his disciples. He's already predicted that he's going away. He also predicts, uh, or not, he doesn't predict that. He tells that I'm going away, but then he predicts that Peter was going to deny him. But the key is that he's going away. And look at what his, how he ministers to his disciples. Verse 1, it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. He knows that the disciples are confused. They're hurting. They're saying, what's going on here? And he says, trust in God and trust also in me. In me, in Christ, right? Verse 6, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. He reminds them of who he is and why he's so important. But then verses 12 through 14 is really where I want us to focus. It says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. Pause for a second. And then Jesus, in that moment, says something to the disciples that was so critical that he had to say it two times. And I'm just thinking, if I'm in the disciples' uh, shoes, I'm not sure I would have understood what this meant exactly. And I'm not sure I understand it completely today. But look what it says. Jesus tells his disciples, and he tells us today as the Gateway Church, as God's people, you can ask anything in my name and I will do it. What? So that the Son of Man will bring glory to the Father of God, right? So it's about God's glory. And it's like the disciples were stunned. In verse 14, Jesus says again, Yes, ask me anything in my name, and I will do it. Wow. A little later, verse 26, just a quick highlight. And when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I've told you. I just want to remind us that the Holy Spirit makes us better. When the Holy Spirit comes on us, it's, it's so important. And then that chapter ends with a little phrase, let's be going. Look at that, let's be going. So and I, the reason I put that in there is because I'm sure that the disciples are saying, Jesus We've got a good thing going here. Let's not mess this up. In fact, I acknowledge that at our mission or our vision and appreciation night. I'm saying, look, you know, God is doing some neat things, but it's almost as if God says, that's good, but let's keep going onward, forward. And I want to tie that to our vision and appreciation night. And just like the disciples might have this inkling like, God, you know, Jesus, don't go away. We, we love you, you know. Like, don't, you know, don't do this. Or, or we're not, let's just stay here for a little bit. No, no, no. God had bigger and better things. And that's what our vision and appreciation night was about. The theme of the night was build from here. And I told the story, I'm not going to tell it today, but January 2nd of this year, first service of the year, I felt like I had a word from the Lord for us as a church, build from here. And that's what we've been doing. We've been really investing in that idea. In the spring, it kind of shifted and kind of was enhanced in, in to build now. Just really sense that from the Lord, it was time for us to be preparing for what God was going to send us in this, in this next season. What God was going to do in and through the Gateway Church. And as we've prayed and as we've been fasting, we sense as a team in a strong way that we are moving into a season of breakthroughs, of impossibilities, of God working in miraculous ways. We believe strongly that there will be prodigal sons and daughters in this season coming home where you have had uh, sons and daughters that, don't, that knew Jesus, have walked away from their faith, but they will return this fall. We're going to see it over and over. And you're, we're, we're going to see it right before our eyes. 
We believe that God uh, is going to heal in this season. He is healing. We have testimonies already. In fact, we were talking as a board this past Thursday night. God is working in such incredible ways. It kind of blows our mind. Our elder, Bob Boss, was like, I, he's like, I haven't seen God move like this maybe ever. God is at work. And he's going to heal. And you've been praying for something over and over. You feel like you wanted to give up or maybe you have given up. God, he is challenging us to keep pressing in because he is the God of the impossible. We believe that relationships are going to be restored. Broken, now healed. Things that were written off, coming back together. We believe that finances are, are going to be healthy. And we'll talk about that in a second. But housing and rent. Uh, Darren, I know you're believing for a home. It's going to happen, brother. And, it, it's, and that the finances at the Gateway Church uh, this fall in particular, there's a spirit of generosity that's already swelling up like we have never seen. And it's going to be exciting to see how God works. Maybe it's your work situation that needs a breakthrough. An impossible uh, situation, but God is going to give you God ideas. I believe there will be promotion. I believe that you'll, if you felt stuck in your work, there, you will no longer be stuck. And let me just talk to the students here. High school, junior high, college students. God, he's going to help you. And there are times that school can seem hard. It should be hard. Am I right? But when it gets hard... This is the word that I I wrote in my notes, and uh, I just want to challenge you to stop what you're doing with your work and spend some time with Jesus and then come back to your assignment. It's a recipe for success, I promise you. I'm telling you, when you're overwhelmed, you feel like you're against something impossible, stop Spend some time with Jesus. Get alone with the Lord. Put a worship song on. Read, the, read some scripture or just be quiet before Jesus. And then come back and you will be successful. That's a word for somebody. I don't know why the Lord put that on my heart, but he did. You're questioning, so, you know, pastor, how can you believe like this? That sounds so great. Or maybe you're the pastor and you can believe like that. Or maybe that's your spiritual gifts, gift. And it is, every time I take a spiritual gifts test, faith is in the top couple. Uh, pastor Bobby can affirm that. But the truth is, these are promises for us. Promises fulfilled. Examples in scripture to build our faith. John 14, Romans 4, Luke 1. They're rooted in God's word, and it's writ- the written word of God. And let's not uh, deny the prophetic word of God in our lives as well. When God speaks, when he shows us something in the future, we can take those promises and we can trust them because all God's promises are yes and amen. In regards to that, I want to just speak what God has spoken to us in regards to the vision of the Gateway Church. Uh, The vision here, as we've written it out, is to be a healthy, multiplying church known for making an impact in our community and in our world. That's our vision statement. That's where we believe, where we're headed. And I want to break that down like I did at the vision night real briefly. The first thing we said is that we're going to be healthy, right? And there are opportunities in this season to be healthy, to be connected to one another. There is no excuse this fall. We have come out with our fall connect group uh, list. We've got tons of opportunities. And there's, this, there's something for everyone this season. And I just want to speak this, that there's, there's uh, not only something for everyone, you and I need each other. We need connect groups to be connected. There should be no lone rangers in the kingdom of God. And so we've got groups for our youth. We've got a family fun night on Sunday nights at six o'clock where all it is, it's families coming together. Pastor Jamie and uh, her uh, husband, Mike, are going to pick different locations and they're going to come in low cost or no cost and just have a blast together. And just the minimum expectation is that you would be praying together. And that's kind of the idea. Idea that you'd pray together. We also have a group that's going to play pickleball together every Sunday night. How much fun does that sound, right? You show up, and if you don't know how to play pickleball, Pastor um, 
Uh, Sean is the expert on staff for that. We got men's breakfast every Tuesday morning. We've got men's breakfast uh, with, with uh, every Tuesday morning at Russ's. Also, we're doing three men's breakfasts on Saturday mornings. The first one's in a couple weeks away. We've got happy hour, which has been a huge raving success over the years. Dorothy Peterson is going to be leading and taking the, the ladies uh, through the story of Elijah. And I'm like, man, you got to get me those notes. I am interested. We got a young adults group with, with uh, Gabrielle and Renissa, and, uh, which is going to be incredible. We got Embrace Grace, a, a, a ministry that's rolling out for mothers with the single mothers that just need community and to be loved, and it's going to be incredible. Of course, we got Wednesday night prayer. We've got uh, FPU, Financial Peace University, and we do this every year. It's part of the staple here at the Gateway Church. And um, if you are struggling in your finances or you just want a breakthrough, this class is for you. It actually starts the 29th of September, so a week after. Uh, just make that note. And then, of course, we've got a women's game night, a couple things planned. And then, I don't know who, uh, who named it this, but the 55 and Up crew, the Empty Nesters, um, uh, the older than me, <laughs> just saying, well-seasoned breakfast. You guys are going to be gathering. I want to come. I mean, it's going to be great. It's a Saturday morning. Nine o'clock, well seasoned. You got to sign up for these things. It's going to be awesome. And there's no excuse. All of these things, again, are rooted in the idea that we need to be healthy in growing together. Luke chapter 2, verse 40, talking about Jesus, says, there was, Then the child grew up healthy and strong. That's Jesus. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. Uh, fast forward a couple of verses to verse 52, the theme verse for the big year that Logan and I just finished. It says, and Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. That's Ben Bay's version. I didn't read it exact the way it is on the screen. Sorry. But we want to be healthy. And not only healthy, we believe we're moving in a direction where we will see multiplication as well. We are a healthy, multiplying church known for making an impact, right? In that multiplication, we just know that healthy things grow. And where we're going to see multiplication this season, number one, is with souls. We believe that lost people will be found. First service, someone gave their heart to Jesus this morning. And the great thing is about souls and about winning the lost, all of us, every single believer here is responsible to make a difference, to take some ground in this area with souls. Uh, we, I said this at the vision night, and I know it's heavy, and I know that this morning this might step on some of your toes, but the truth is, is that if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are making a disciple as well. Disciples make disciples by nature of what that word and what it means to be a disciple. And so if you're not walking with someone that's a new believer or a pre-believer, if you're not investing in a relationship, you may want to ask yourself, am I really a disciple of Jesus? And I know that's hard, but it's linked. And the truth is, there's another scriptural uh, premise, the seed time and harvest principle, that where you sow seeds, you will reap a harvest. And I just want to challenge you, and I'm challenging myself. I want to be a person that is sowing seeds to reap a harvest of souls. And I believe we're going to see multiplication in souls. Also in the altars, we declared that the altars are open for business. I'm a product of the altar, and uh, we are making uh, plans. And uh, next week is actually going to be a real launch in the altar, and, uh, and we're going to talk about that next week in prayer, uh, making that a priority. And then the third thing that we're going to do, multiply, is we're going to see God's Word multiplied, and we're going to feast on the Word of God this fall. We're going to be studying the book of James, and they're super excited about this. And James is a powerful book. 
It's relevant, it's uh, timely, it's challenging, and we have a resource for you you can take today, and uh, it's the book of James in the ESV study journal. On one side, it's the scripture, and then on the other side, it is the, uh, it's, it's going to give you opportunity to take notes throughout the series, and the series starts September 18th. September 18th is going to be a big day for us. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, we're doing stuff in between services. It's going to be just a real uh, blast, but the series is going to be called Everyday Faith Lessons uh, in the Book of James, and we want you to be prepared and ready to walk with us through the Book of James. You can take those, and then when you take one, you'll notice there is a giving envelope in there with a suggested donation of five bucks. You can put five bucks in there anytime, put it in the giving receptacles, or you can give online to do that, and we appreciate that. Now, there's a bunch of verses in Scripture that talk about multiplying, seed time, and harvest and being fruitful and multiplying. But the one that stuck out to me this week as I was praying was Ephesians 3.20. Look what it says. Now all glory, there's this theme here of giving God glory with the impossible, who is able through his mighty power to work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. God is about to move in ways that are going to blow our mind. So we talked about healthy, multiplying, and then thirdly, we talked about impact. To be known for making an impact in our community and in our world. And when I think about impact, we all have to fight being inward focused. It's just the, our, it's our human nature just to be, think of ourselves, but we need to start thinking outside of ourselves. When I think about impact in our community, in our world, we take missions seriously here, but it's not just about missions. It's about God getting our heart. And when God gets our heart, he gets our life. It's giving our lives to make an impact. That's locally, maybe through city serve, or day-to-day at work, or in our family family or neighborhoods, and then also to the ends of the earth. I want you to mark in your calendars, write it down now, October 23rd and October 30th. They're the two most important Sundays of the year for us as the Gateway Church. It's our missions encounter. And this year, we are working hard already uh, to make sure that that's a, uh, just a highlight for us. And it's really, it, it, we've said that missions has been and always will be the key to our future. And we believe that deeply. At our vision night, I, there was a verse that for the night that God gave me from uh, Psalm 67 verses 1 and 2. And it, reply, it really uh, attends to this idea of impact. Look what it says. It says, may God be merciful and bless you. Who wants to be blessed? Come on, let, let me see. Yeah, we do. May his face smile with favor on us. And we do believe that God is favoring us in this season. It says, may your ways be known throughout the earth, right? So it's not just that we're blessed, it's we're blessed so we can look outward and make a difference. You're saving power among people everywhere. And just all the other thing with, in, in regards to missions and making an impact, that heart of generosity I mentioned before, I believe, and I'll speak it again, that we're moving into a season of generosity like we've never seen. And we're going to talk about that. We'll unpack that when we get closer to missions time. But it is an exciting season. And the reason we believe that God is moving in these ways is because nothing is impossible with God. Nothing with God. And we don't have to wait. I'm going to ask Mary to come, if you can, uh, if, and just uh, join me here. I want to do a couple things. I want to talk about salvation and then our own needs, and then we'll respond, and then I've got two goals that we'll talk about to end the service. But this is the deal. We believe God's moving. He's already moving, and we don't have to wait for the fall to roll out. God is a transforming God. God. He's an incredible God, and he is a God who saves. His desire is for every single one of us to know him and to know him deeply. And if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, we want to offer you the free gift of salvation. I want to just encourage you to close your eyes, bow your heads here for a moment. If you're here and you're 
in the room and you don't know Jesus, in a moment I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. If you're tracking online and you don't know Jesus and you're ready to receive or to accept Jesus, I want you just to put in the chat, just say, I need Jesus, and we will follow up with you 100% of the time. But for those that are in the room, if you understand your lostness, that we're all sinners according to Scripture and according to just you know common sense, we all make mistakes, we've all sinned, that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. If that's you and you've not accepted Jesus, who will forgive your sins and take away your sins as far as the east is from the west, the Bible says, today is your day to respond. First service one person did, I'm just curious, with everyone's head bowed and eyes closed, if you're away from the Lord and you need Jesus to save you today, would you just slip up your hand? I'm not going to embarrass you. We just want to encourage you. We're, we're going to pray for you. Anyone at all, second service, slip up your hand so I can see. Where is God moving in this place today? Okay. I don't see any hands here. For those that may be online, Lord, I just pray that you would just save, that you do a mighty work in Jesus' name. The second thing beyond salvation is that I realize with your eyes on me here, you can open them up now. I realize that every single week when we come to the Gateway Church, there are people that walk through these doors with heavy hearts that are facing mountains in their way, impossibilities, health issues, financial issues, housing issues, relationship things. And the the reality is, is there's not a week that goes by that we don't need the presence of God and we don't need each other to minister to one another. And what we're going to do before we get to the final two things is we are going to pray for one another. And I understand, I just said that, and some of you, your anxiety is creeping in. You're like, oh, what am I going to do? Listen, all you have to do is pray a blessing over someone that's near you. And what we're going to do is I'm going to ask that you would stand. And if you're uh, by yourself, you got to find someone to pray with. If you're with your family, certainly you can pray with the family. If you're a couple, you can find another couple to pray with. Uh, but uh, Pastor Sean and Pastor Bobby, uh, let's make sure that no one is by themselves. And so just slide to find someone. Uh, let's make sure. And basically, I just want you to say, hey, is there anything I could be praying with you about? And share quickly and then pray. And if there's nothing significant, pray a blessing over them. And we're going to take some time to do that right here, right now. So just do it right where you are. Just turn. In fact, I, I'd encourage you, uh, Matt, tap the people in front of you. It's the Descensos. They need You guys need to be praying for each other. Nicole, turn around. Let the Lord use you. That'd be great. Let's see. We've got a couple here. Pastor Bobby, if you could. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. Good. Good. Who else? Make sure everyone's got somebody. Good. Yes. Yes. You want to come up and pray here? That'd be great. Awesome. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Lord Jesus. Come on, just ask. Move. Good. Share what's next, what's coming, what's on your heart, the impossibility. Share that quickly and then move to pray. We'll pray for one another. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, move in this place. Lord, that we would just be actively seeing, feeling, hearing. God, move, Lord. Holy Spirit, praise your name. God, minister, God. Touch. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just pray for one another. Just take the time. We're going to take another two minutes. And two minutes seems like a long time, but you can do it. Just pray for one another. Hallelujah. We bear each other's needs. We pray for our kids. We pray for our parents. Thank you. We pray, God, Lord, that you're moving, you're working, God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, God, do what only you can do. 
Jesus, have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Whatever you're facing, claim the promises of Jesus. Yes. We got 60 more seconds. Continue. Wrap up within 60 seconds. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're working. You're, you're moving, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. God, we pray, we pray, we pray. Lord, touch our families. God, we believe for the impossible, for the impossibilities in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just 20 more seconds. I know it seems like a long time, but wrap it up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, you're at work. You're at work. You're at work. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, God, that you're a God who can. Your promises are yes and amen. And, Lord, we pray those promises over our friends, our family here at the Gateway Church. We pray for those that are online, that are tracking, God, that you would do the impossible. God, that you would be at work in this season. And God, we just ask that even now you're breaking through, breaking through in all of the areas that we've shared previous. God, and in areas that weren't even mentioned, God, you know the intricate details of our lives. You know what we need even before we ask. But Lord, in this season, do your work in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. You can stay standing, and I promise this is only going to last another couple minutes, so just hang with me. At our vision night, we presented two goals for every person at the Gateway Church in this season. The first goal was to step up and get involved, be a volunteer, participate, right? The favor of God is upon us, and we need you. We need each other to be working, to be, to be moving ahead. And so we've got opportunities uh, all over the place to step up, to be a part. If you're not involved in some way serving on a regular basis, we want you. Make yourself known, or when you're asked, say yes. This is a season to volunteer. The second thing we talked about is that we challenge each other to ask the question, who would benefit from what's happening? Who would benefit from going through the book of James? Who is disengaged or who is away from the Lord? And I'm not talking about stealing people from other churches. Can I get an amen for that? And I realize that in our homes, when we invite someone in, we prepare. And that's what God has called us to do, to build now, be preparing for what God is sending. And it hit me this week that we want you to invite, and we want you to invite your friends, your guests, your neighbors, your family. And what happens is when you invite someone into your home, what do you do? You prepare, and it's a real honor. And oftentimes, at your house, you will light a candle. This is the only candle I could find in our house. I don't know um, how many of you would believe this, but when I was in my early 20s, I was a candle guy. How many of you have uh, heard of party light candles? Anybody party light? Yeah, we got some party light. I was a party light guy. Not Jessica, me. <laughs> and I, I light candles a lot, but this is the only candle I could find. I, where are you hiding all of our candles? We just don't have any. Folks, we need a candle uh, or two, Jessica and I. And, I, and any autumn flavor, um, patchouli. That's for me. It's, uh, Jessica said, no patchouli. Never mind, no patchouli. Anyway, but we light a candle. And I was thinking about it. You prepare and you invite. And oftentimes at our house, when friends or family or guests are over, we light a candle. And today, I'm lighting this candle symbolically, saying it's open season to invite your guests. 
I said this at the vision night, and I've said this to a few of you individually, that when you invite your guest to the Gateway Church, it is the highest compliment you could give me or the team. When you love what Pastor Sean is doing with the kids, with the students, and you come up and say, man, you're really making a difference with our kids, or uh, thank you, or that's so much fun, or you went to camp, thank you. That's great, and Pastor Sean needs to hear that. But the greatest compliment you could give Pastor Sean is by inviting a family with youth age students to say, hey, come and be a part of what God's doing here. Does that make sense? Am I, am I right? Same thing is true with Pastor Bobby. You say, oh man, I'm so glad you're back from sabbatical. We missed you so much. You, when you worship, it's just like heaven, right? Maybe. It's good. We love you, Pastor Bobby. And you, you compliment Pastor Bobby when he preaches or he teaches or whatever. That, he, he needs that. That's good. But I promise you, the greatest compliment you can give Pastor Bobby is to invite someone to come and say, man, come experience what God is doing in our worship service. It's the greatest compliment. You, you, a lot of you will say, oh, man, Pastor, it's so good to have you back. You don't have to say that today, okay? Um, and that's good. I need to hear that. But the greatest compliment, same for Pastor Jamie, back in the area with kids. Say, man, you're investing in our kids. My kids are understanding the word of God like never before. And I'm telling you, Pastor Jamie is a prayer warrior. And, and she just invests in the altar times with your kids is off the charts. And that, that's awesome. But the greatest compliment you can give Pastor Jamie is by bringing another family with young kids and say, man, your kids need this. And so I light this candle symbolically. And some of you are doing it. Gabby, you're doing it today. You bring Jonathan. Way to go. First time, right? I was gone for a long time, so uh, maybe this is not your first time. First time, first time, good. Yeah. And I just want to encourage you, we're going to fan the flame that it's open season here at the Gateway Church. It's the highest compliment. Let's reach one more. Real quick, we've focused as a church on just a few things, and we're going to continue to do so. We've reached, we've invested heavily in kids, in youth ministry, in worship, in the Word of God has been a priority for us. Prayer. If you love this church, you should come on Wednesday nights to prayer uh, and come and pray with us, intercede with us. We're, move, we're changing the direction for the fall. It's going to be a really learning and just a challenge. We're going to, the theme for our Wednesday night is the impossible God for all of the fall. That's what God has put on my heart. And so that'll be fun. And then we focus on missions. And so just a few things, kids, youth, worship, the word and prayer and missions. And we do missions because it's the key to our future. And with that, we, I want us to close with this song that really speaks to where we're headed and what God is doing and seeing the impossible come true. Let's sing it with gusto. Pastor Bobby, let's lead us. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, all things are possible through you. Lord, we thank you that all of your promises are yes and amen. And like it says in your word in 2 Corinthians and Ephesians and John 4, that when you do the impossible, when you move those mountains, when you do what only you can do, it is so that we can give you the glory, that it's not for us, it's not for our own benefit, but it's a chance for us to show a miracle-working God that when you do something great, it actually shows our weakness. And it shows our dependence on you. So help us to become more dependent on you. Help us to lay these things aside and set them at your feet, Jesus. And we thank you that there is healing through your blood, that there is forgiveness, that there is redemption through the sacrifice that you paid, and Lord, that there's even reconciliation, that there is new life through your resurrection. And so we cling to who you are. We thank you for your faithful life. We thank you for your faithful sacrifice. And we thank you that you are true to your promises in your resurrection, that it gives us hope of your return as well, Jesus. 
we just thank you. And I pray for anyone here who is looking for a miracle, whether it's at their work, whether it's with their family, whether it's with their finances, whether, whether it's at school, Lord, or with mental health or everything or anything in between, Lord. I pray that you would meet those needs now in Jesus' name. And Lord, that as you meet these needs and as we give you glory, that we would be salt and light to a lost, hurting, and broken world. That when you do the impossible in and through us, that it can be a testimony to others who are looking for the same miracle here on the lake shore. So Lord, help us to be faithful as we go. Help us to be as walking miracles, salt and light, proclaiming what you have done already and what you're going to do in our lives. We give you the praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for service today. You can go in the grace of God. Have a great Labor Day. Thank you for listening to this week's message from the Gateway Church. If you'd like to find out more about our church, such as service times, giving, and ways to get connected, visit us at thegateway.church.